for a later date. Now, most Kenyans in their 30s and above grew up listening to old school country music recorded in Nashville by the likes of Charlie Pride, Jim Reeves, Dolly Parton, Kenny Rogers, Don Williams, and many others. Elvis Otieno is one of those Kenyans whose parents loved country music, sparking an interest in him. Today, his voice has been attracting hearts of Kenyan fans and indeed international visitors who are all too keen to listen to this raw talent of country music. Elvis Otieno, whose stage name is Sir Elvis, was determined to bring country music to Africa and in particular Kenya, and indeed he did it. But he says it has not been easy. Let's listen in. My name is Sir Elvis and I'm a country artist. I'm based in Nairobi. I love country music and uh, we do a lot of country here. My parents loved to listen to Elvis Presley's records and uh, so when a boy was born in the family uh, they decided to name him Elvis. But it's a huge coincidence that later on I'll you know, be able to pick on music and you know, sing like the person I was named after. They played a lot of country music in, our, in, in, in the house back then, they still do. Um, and I kind of like picked it up because I loved to listen to it when I was a kid. My accent actually comes from the fact that I, I grew up listening to the country songs. I'm self-taught to play guitar and to sing as well. Everything about me uh, has, come, uh, has come through because of my own curiosity. I decided to uh, start uh, singing country music professionally in Nairobi around 2003. Uh, but then there wasn't so much... Yes, country music was popular, but not as it is right now. At some point I questioned myself uh, if that was the right thing that I would do with myself in my life. Uh, because I started out with a few people in front of me, probably maybe f uh, five to ten people. Who actually it started like people were curious about what, what I was doing. I mean, they could listen to me. The voice was there, the music was there, but they were not very sure about this. Out of curiosity, many people kind of like started coming to where I'm, I'm having a show. Then, but I have to say, it took a very long time. That's one thing that I would take, or I'll, I'll tell all artists to, to take in that. Sometimes you might have the talent and you might have the platform, but it will take a lot of, a lot of work that goes into it. When I'm on the stage, I try to give the raw feelings of my performance. Each and every song has its message, has its, its, its feeling around it, its mood. Just I was uh, sifting through uh, what I would do with my new single, Loving Man, and uh, one of my friends in, in, uh, in my management team actually told me, hey, Elvis, I think it would be a good idea if uh, we could send out Loving Man in different places and, and see what, what can come out of it. And boom, it didn't take long. Uh, the same month we received uh, email from uh, international international country music uh, festival uh, they usually in uh, it's called uh, the town is called Jefferson so uh, they usually hold a, an annual uh, contest in, in, in Jefferson in October so they sent me an email and uh, requested me if I'll be willing to take part in it and uh, and they say that uh, if 
I accepted the nomination uh, to be part of that. And uh, I said yes. So we are looking forward to it and I know we're going to do good. We're going to do good, yes. We have to try and grow country music and have a wider age group uh, into it. And I think God has been gracious because we managed to do that and we have younger uh, country fans. But I do believe that the authentic country music from, from the 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s is going to be here for the next 50 or 100 years. It's going to be here. <laughs>